All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are Mati Monimandao, all the way from New York. I'm Brian. This is Anson. This is Sam. And we're here today uh, to try to reimagine and rethink how we tackle the global challenge of conservation and cultural and heritage sites around the world. Now, this pagoda uh, is a 500-year-old pagoda in Chiang Mai. Unfortunately, two months ago, it was destroyed by heavy rain. And one of the leading uh, causes because they didn't have enough funding, they didn't have enough reliable funding to conserve the projects. But this problem is not only just one pagoda, it's shared among hundreds and thousands of heritage sites around the world. And because of this, we tried to look into it and we found that there are three main challenges that we face. Number one is a funding challenge. There is a big funding gap where only 40% of their revenue is covered by government grants. The rest of 60% is unreliable. It's basically on donations. And traditional donation also lacks the incentive. So if you think about donating something to a cause, it's a one time of experience. You don't really have that recurring. You don't really have that relationship uh, with the conservation sites. And also the process is opaque. Like there's no transparency, traceability is not there. Uh, and that discourages potential benefactors in donating the cause. So this is uh, relevant and also aligned with UN's uh, SDG, especially this is to create sustainable cities and communities. And we want to validate this hypothesis as well. So in the last month, the last two months, we tried to validate uh, by interacting with primary stakeholders, such as nonprofit officials, and also the current benefactors and potential benefactors like you and me. So how big exactly is this problem? So on the left side, you can see those are the conservation sites. So the biggest group right now is the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There's about 1,100 properties. But if you actually zoom out, there's about 285,000 protected areas around the world. And with an average annual expense of maintenance about 60K per site, that creates a big uh, funding gap of $31 billion. Now, the source right now is only 350 million around the world. So there's a big gap that we want to bridge. And with Monument Dow, we want to address and expand this target market to uh, new markets such as online art collectors, corporate CSR, and also the bigger uh, pie of the tourism uh, market. So what is Monument Dow? So it's an online platform that we help conservation sites to create, uh, to sort of issue NFTs in order to uh, create an additional funding source uh, to reach a wider set of audience, as I said. And this is the bigger picture of how, how our uh, platform works. So conservation projects will sign in to Monument Dow, where we charge 5% transaction fee during the fundraising process to make sure that operationally we're, uh, we're sustainable. And also, uh, and from that, we uh, the conservation projects can create campaigns by issuing these NFTs to, and then it will be floated into a marketplace where benefactors like you and me can create uh, can buy these NFTs to support that conservation sites. Now, as a as a purchaser of this NFT, you get two benefits. Number one, you actually get a direct relationship now with your conservation sites because now they know that you are the NFT holder. And secondly, you can sell this in the secondary market where using smart contracts, we can actually pre-program a commission rate going back to the conservation sites so that it creates a recurring revenue. Now, Anson will talk, talk about the value propositions. Right. Thanks, Brian. Now I'll talk a little bit more about product development journey and the considerations behind them. So Monument Dow believes that leveraging Web3 technology over traditional fundraising tools uh, is the right approach for three main reasons. The first being that blockchain technology allows stakeholders ranging from auditors to campaign uh, supporters to explore transactions such as um, purchases or movement of mon money on chain uh, with complete transparency. This increases trust, accountability, and traceability, something that Web2 platforms um, do not do very well or they, they kind of like lack on. Secondly, community building and um, fostering is huge and commonplace within the Web3 space, which is what we intend to continue building upon. Our solution is to bring people um, of similar interests together. Of a, it's kind of like an opportunity for shared experiences. Um, so think of it as like get-togethers. Last, with our eventual DAO approach, which uh, we intend to further engage community meaningfully. We intend to propose NFT buyers to propose uh, vote and improvement initiatives around the monument community that they are part of. Um, so conservations can choose whether they want to adopt these uh, initiatives or not. With that, let's move on to how Monument DAO actually uh, functions from two perspectives. The first one being the buyer and the, one, the other one being conservation site. As a buyer, you can discover existing campaigns uh, by searching your favorite 
places or monuments. Mm -hmm. You'll then be brought to a campaign page where you can read and learn more about the monument. If you're inside and this is a campaign that you want to be part of, you can navigate the NFT marketplace section where you can browse the existing NFTs for sale. Select an NFT that catches your eye and then click on it, which will bring you to a page to look deeper into the information behind the NFT, such as price, description, and other activities related to that specific NFT. Next, as a conservation site, we will see a dashboard view where you can click in and create a campaign and populate information related to the campaign. So to demonstrate this flow, we actually create a low-fi productionized landing page First, the conservation site will input all the information that you need, such as campaign period and end date. And there are two options where you can put in the NFT art, either generating using our Monument DAO AI in the future, or just uploading NFTs, uh, which you have created. Then you choose the kind of blockchain that you want to be on. So in this instance, we chose Ethereum and the marketplace, which you want to sell your NFTs at. So put in the fundraising amount. An example is 100 bucks and ten dollars per NFT. And now you can connect it to your wallet uh, which is the owner of the fundraiser. Put in your project URL and we're good to go. So what happens after this <laughs> is that you can use, um, oh, sorry, too, too fast. So what happens after this is that um, we are deploying your NFTs onto the blockchain. And what's happening here is that we are confirming the transaction of which you can then browse it on um, blockchain explorer such as Etherscan. You can see now it's pending and over here, we have seen that we have successfully minted 10 NFTs onto our website, uh, onto the, uh, our, uh, onto the blockchain. So after you create a, a campaign at ES launch, we have designed analytic tool where you can track the performance, monitor the campaign and where the benefactors are coming from. And with this feedback information, it allows conservation sites to iterate and uh, iterate from there and for future campaigns. So in the immediate future, we want to test and validate our idea and prototypes by creating a pilot experiment. And we have chosen Sage Hall, which is our um, home university, and this is built in 18, uh, 1875. The intention is to create new ways of generating um, funds aside from their low tech way of selling a Sage Hall book today. So these are the metrics, <laughs> these are the metrics that we are using to um, validate our MVP. Our first metric today is to uh, measure the total amount of fund raised, and our secondary metrics are both qualitative and quantitative. And what happens um, after the pilot? I'll let Sam uh, to talk about our future plans. So for our product uh, roadmap in the medium term, we focus on building out a campaign management tool for uh, our heritage sites and an NFT marketplace for our benefactors. And then in the long term, we plan on deploying as a DAO and expanding to an extended reality experience with our live events. Uh, our year one projection, uh, we plan on onboarding 50 sites, each with an average fund size of 60K, leading to an ARP of 3K which comes out to an annualized revenue of 150K with a seven and a half multiple that leads us with a million dollar uh, year-end uh, valuation. And then some of the potential challenges that we've identified, um, one is onboarding non-savvy users. Um, and we've decided that, you know, we can implement uh, traditional financial payment rails, right? Like uh, credit on-ramp, have a mobile first UI. Um, mobile seems to be favored over desktop, particularly in emerging markets. For onboarding heritage sites, we plan on pushing our value proposition of enabling wider engagement, uh, right? We can, we can cater to younger supporters uh, who value that authentic connection, especially with Gen Z and millennials. Uh, for public entities, we plan on increasing internal buy-in to navigate that red tape. Uh, we plan on sharing educational content to remove those informational barriers uh, that they might have, you know, in terms of like the Web3 space and NFTs in general. Uh, positive externalities are across three areas, cultural, economic, and sustainability. From a cultural point of view, heritage conservation has the effect of retaining cultural identity. Red heritage sites can be focal points for their communities. It can lead to like development of heritage neighborhoods, uh, which is a very strong network effect. Uh, the economic side, uh, they could spur economic growth, have secondary effects in tangential industries like retail, FNB, uh, the service sector. Sustainability wise, often heritage architecture features passive design techniques like uh, optimal solar uh, orientation, uh, compact sizing, uh, you know, um, ideal airflow. So this can contribute to sustainable urban development goals. Now, even though the technology is new, 
uh, contributing to conservation projects are not new at all. Like if you visit a museum, you buy stamps or minted coins, this is the way you can interact better with the conservation sites. And with that, we also want to give you a person experience by uh, giving an airdrop of 10 NFTs if you scan this QR code <laughs> right after this presentation. And with that, we hope that our project can uh, tackle this global challenge and be an NFT for good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Monica.